dark cloud crosses the plains of India and unleashes the rains that breathe life into a parched land. The monsoon has arrived, and with it comes joy, relief, and rebirth. Here, in the northeastern U.S., we move from one season to the next with only some minor adjustments in our daily lives. Across the globe, in India, the seasons are created by the monsoon, an enormous force of nature whose powers influence life and death. This great weather system of water and wind sweeps across the land, bringing rain to the thirsty deserts, creating rivers and grasslands, even shifting the waters of the sea. At any moment in time, India's people and wildlife are either in the midst of the monsoon's grip or waiting for it to return. Experience India's great monsoon next on Nature. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. And by Canon, providing the power of imaging to express your visions at home and work. And by Ford, maker of the Ford Explorer. Because sometimes where the pavement ends is where the world begins. Ford Explorer, the world's too big to be left unexplored. Clouds gather over the steep Himalayan mountains. With the arrival of moist winds from the ocean, the storm gains momentum, becoming one of the most powerful natural forces on Earth. Rajasthan, Gujarat, and West Madhya Pradesh. Bikaner recorded 44 degrees. Gwalior recorded 50 degrees. The sheer height of the Himalayas cuts India off from the cool northerly air. With a retreat of winter, the country becomes a furnace. For parts of the country, spring can bring temperatures of up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. By mid-May, the people swelter under a scorching sun, searing dry winds and unrelenting heat. Severe drought-like conditions persist. Water is precious. The late arrival of the monsoon could mean failed crops and starvation. The days right before the monsoon are the most unbearable of all. But it is the intense heat of the land compared to the cool ocean that triggers the monsoon. The rising hot air over India creates a vacuum and the cooler, moist ocean air rushes in, forming clouds. The first clouds form along the Indian coast, gathering off India's southernmost tip. The monsoon is on its way.
the next few months, it will be too dangerous for these fishermen to go out to sea. Even the Brahmani kite will take refuge inland. Around the 1st of June, the monsoon roars into southwest India. monsoon has advanced into South Kerala. Heavy rain was reported from Cochin and Calicut, where 17 centimeters and 14 centimeters fell respectively. There is a heavy rainfall warning. Heavy rain is likely at Calicut and Trivandrum. In India, after months of searing heat, the black monsoon skies bring joy. For them, the arrival of the monsoon is a blessing. Monsoon does not just mean rain. The word comes from the Arabic mosim, which means a season of winds. In the summer, the winds shift direction and come from the southwest. The winds flow from the Indian Ocean, so by the time they make landfall, they are laden with water. Once the monsoon arrives, it stays for four months. This is no ordinary rain cloud. The extreme heat over India has sucked in a layer of air that is three miles deep. The monsoon winds last from June through September. The mountain forests receive up to 20 feet of rain each year. There are many small creatures, such as land crabs, that only emerge in the torrential rain. We know little about them because the slopes are now at their most inaccessible. These forests thrive on the deluge. Tropical fruits swell in the clammy atmosphere. Trees fruit now because this is when seeds will germinate and grow most quickly. The ground holds water like a sponge and releases it gradually so that even during the dry season, the trees stay green. Unique animals have evolved here, cushioned from the harsher seasonal extremes found elsewhere in India. The lion-tailed macaque is surrounded by leaves, but can't eat them. Their stomachs are like ours, only able to digest the sugars found in fruit. Usually they have to pick around to get enough to eat. But during the monsoon, food is abundant. It will take more than the demands of an empty stomach to harvest this jackfruit. Only the oldest male of the troop has strong enough jaws and teeth to break open the flesh. Lion-tailed macaques are dependent on a rich diet of fruits and seeds, so they can only live in forests that receive the fullest benefits of the monsoon. They are isolated from the rest of India 
by the towering peaks of Nilgiri, Anamundi, and Dadabeda. The mountains create a rain shadow. Behind them, just 18 miles from the evergreen rainforests, the land is still baked dry. Indian elephants have survived the past few months on a lean diet. They can eat bark and twigs, but they still lose weight. Since January, these teak forests have received no rain at all. The dry season winds blow from the northeast, from the continental interior. They serve only to fan forest fires. The elephants use shrouds of dust to shield themselves from the sun. But in mid-June, the winds shift. For most Indian wildlife, fortunes change with the wind. A Hindi proverb says, when clouds appear like partridge feathers and are spread across the sky, they will not go without shedding rain. The monsoon rain softened the fired earth. Animals who have spent the dry season deep underground emerge to breed. The camouflage of these frogs is matched only by those animals ready to eat them. Snakes are a special menace during the monsoon when heavy rains flush them from their hiding places. Within a few days of these showers, life is restored to the teak forests. These evergreen mountain forests are home to the Nilgiri Langurs. These monkeys are strictly vegetarian, living on a diet of leaves and shrubs which have blossomed from the recent rains. Finding food takes up a major part of the day's activities. They will spend up to eight hours a day eating. A red-vented bulbul and some forest minor birds have discovered a fast food place. The rains have triggered a mass exodus of winged termites. Insects are prolific during the monsoon, which is why so many Indian birds time their breeding to the rains. A baya weaver bird colony is in full swing. The males weave their nests using the first growth of vegetation. The strips of grass and leaves are still pliable enough to be laced together. But it takes practice. The technique is important because male weaver birds will be judged by the quality of their nests.
Competition within the colony is intense. When the nest is nearly complete, the male tries to attract the attention of the female weaver bird. Only if the nest meets with her approval will she mate with its owner. Grass is also crucial for the elephants to regain their strength. They get much needed protein from the tips of succulent new shoots. As the grass grows taller, it becomes coarser. The tasty bits are now concentrated at the bottom of the stems. To ensure a grit-free meal, the elephant simply dust off the roots. By late June, the monsoon is well established over southern India. The elephants can disperse into the greening jungles. Virtually all of the country's rainfall will occur during the next three months. For Indian farmers, this is a period of hard work. The harvest depends on the rhythms of the rainy season. If the monsoon arrives on time, India will be bursting with fertility. The monsoon has yet to reach northern India. Vultures are among the few to make a living from the parched landscape. But the thermals on which they soar are helping to pull the monsoon air mass northward. As the season wears on, the monsoon becomes fickle. Even small variations in the lie of the land slow and swerve the air currents. Indian farmers say the rain may fall on one horn of their buffalo, but not the other. The monsoon rains begin at the southern coast and slowly move northward. It will take them a month to cross India. Where the rain has fallen, a grassy oasis springs up. It's an opportunity for a highly sprung bird.
Every three minutes, the lesser florican uncoils itself over three feet into the air. For a small bird in long grass, this is an effective but exhausting way to find a mate. The florican will have to make up to 400 jumps a day. At the end of the monsoon, it will disappear from these grasslands as suddenly as it arrived. The moist monsoon winds reach northern India, unveiling fresh surprises. Sometimes, mysteriously, the clouds break up. It's mid-July, and there's not a rain cloud in the sky. The heat mounts again. The country is poised for drought. In the north are some of the driest parts of India. Crops are squeezed into a short growing season. A break in the monsoon can spell disaster. If it continues, famine could occur across the land. It's a perilous time for people and wildlife. This is the time when most Indian birds are preparing to breed. Painted storks flock to nesting areas despite the cloudless skies. Splashes of bright color on their feathers indicate they're ready to mate. But without rain, all they can do is squabble over nesting materials. If the rains don't return soon, there won't be any food for their young, and the storks will abandon their nests completely. The sapping heat and humidity drag on. But when peacocks begin to court, change is in the air. In Indian folklore, the peacock's mournful cry is a symbol of separated lovers and its stately dance is believed to bring rain. In late July, a week after it disappeared, the monsoon returns. Within an hour, the temperature drops by 20 degrees. Monsoon vigorous over central India. On Thursday, temperature fell appreciably in south of the Pradesh. 
rain or thunder showers will occur at many places during the next 48 hours. Bhopal recorded 12 centimeters of rain. It rains for 10 days non-stop. During a monsoon, some regions receive an average of 38 feet of rain. When the clouds lift, the landscape has been transformed. Hollows in the thorn scrub jungle have become shallow lakes. Now the birds have a chance to catch up. Fish and other aquatic life breed explosively in these floodwaters. Thousands of pairs of birds will raise their young on these lakes. The scrub has become a watery heaven. Saurus cranes arrive for their mating rituals. The monsoon is above all a time of passion. Late in the season, thousands of gargany and teal arrive from Europe and Central Asia to spend winter here. A marsh harrier is in pursuit. The harrier settles for a water rodent. As reservoirs and lakes fill up, the landscape turns blue. Blue is believed to be a mirror to heaven.
In the city of Jodhpur, the Brahmin caste paint their houses blue. But here, the promise of the monsoon can evaporate. The city stands at the gateway to the tar desert. Several heat wave conditions will prevail in most parts of Rajasthan. On Sunday, temperatures rose to above normal. The highest temperature in the region was 49 degrees, recorded at Allahabad and Dhalpur. The monsoon storms advance toward the Tar Desert. The desert may experience a year with no rain, followed by a year of heavy floods. Animals here have adapted to the climactic extremes of drought and flood. Desert gerbils can survive without drinking, getting moisture just from what they eat. The hot sands of their home are nudged farther over the rocky ground by the relentless wind. Desert gerbils come out to feed only during the coolest part of the day. The rest of the time is spent in their burrows. The Halari people are seasonal nomads. At the start of the monsoon season, they're on the move again. They're looking for grazing land. In mid-July, the Halari move into a vast arid plain in Gujarat called the Ron of Kutch. The Ron was formed long ago when earth movements lifted the plain out of the Arabian Sea. The groundwater is still briny. In the sizzling temperatures, it has become even saltier than the sea. Local people pump the groundwater to the surface, where it quickly evaporates. The ron is hostile to life, but the plain does support a rare animal, a wild ass known as the coor. The coor need to be hardy. They are living on an ancient seabed, but for most of the year, water appears only as an illusion. During the monsoon, however, the sea reinvades the land. This water hasn't fallen from the sky. Strong monsoon winds have blown it here. In July, thousands of acres of desert have become a temporary extension of the sea. Mostly, it's just knee deep. A few Gujaratis who live on the fringes of the Ron make an extra living by fishing. They locate tidal currents which drive prawns far into the desert and into their nets. The floodwaters coax a new growth of plants out of the salty sludge. This is a critical time for the wild asses. Most of the pregnant mares will drop their foals. The low islands of new vegetation provide good food for the foals and safe places to give birth. Soon after foaling, the mares are ready to mate again. In anticipation, a herd of bachelor males has moved closer. They won't move out for some weeks 
by which time much of the standing water will have evaporated. Swaths of salt-tolerant grasses soften the crusty earth. This is the best feeding of the year, an ideal time for making milk. The stallion who guards this herd of females is nervous. The mares will be fertile for a short time, so despite the occasional brush-off, he must defend his harem from potential challengers. Nearby, the bachelor males are testing their strengths. Toughness is not enough. Only a confident young male will attempt to take a female from under the nose of an experienced stallion. The stallion wastes no time in proving his staying power. The Kur are larger than their domestic relatives and much faster. They can sustain a 40 mile per hour gallop over these salt flats. By the end of July, the clouds have moved on, leaving the asses and the Halari's livestock to compete for the drying grass. Beyond the deserts are the rain-fed rivers of northern India and the country's most ancient animal. The Garial crocodile rarely ventures far from deep water. Despite being one of the world's largest and heaviest crocodiles, they are very shy and are harmless to humans. Males can grow to more than 23 feet. On land, they're slow movers. But in water, they can maneuver with speed. They need to be quick because they mainly eat fish. Humans have no need to fear these teeth. The gharial is fussy about its food and where it lives. It needs sandy riverbanks for basking and for egg laying. Without the yearly monsoon torrents, there would be no sand. So the gharial has evolved with this weather system. The hatching is so well synchronized with the monsoon season that according to local legend, it is the sound of thunder that cracks the eggs. In reality, the hatch is triggered by the heat. The chorus of the hatchlings encourages the female to start digging. The females will spend five hours excavating the nest. The hatchlings must get to the river by dawn.
Those that survive this far are crashed at the shore. Garial mothers look after them in shifts. Despite this shared parental care, the dangers are just beginning. The river will soon be flooded and these hatchlings will be washed away. It seems a paradox that they should be born at such a life-threatening time of year. But the floodwaters help disperse the Garials through the Ganges River system. Most of these rivers flow from the Himalayan foothills and meander across the northern plains. They all feed the mighty River Ganges. This is India's heartland. Some of the country's most densely populated cities, Calcutta, Delhi, and Varanasi, lie along the Ganges and its tributaries. These cities are at the mercy of the monsoon, which each year can cause the rivers to overflow, flooding the surrounding area. monsoon sweeps up the Bay of Bengal along the Ganges Delta. Through the month of August, depressions develop over the sea and draw up great quantities of moisture. The storms pass over the land, breaking against the Himalayan mountains. The 5th century poet Kalidasa described the monsoon and the advancing clouds as rutting elephants, enormous and full of rain. They come forward as kings among tumultuous armies. Their flags are lightning. Their thunder is the drum. Rock and debris is ripped away by the angry rivers. When the deluge hits the Indian plain, the water tears into and over the land. Monsoon has been vigorous over the plains of Uttar Pradesh. 28 centimeters of rain was recorded at Basti. Heavy rain is likely in many places in Uttar Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh during the next 48 hours. Advanced flood warnings and defenses help prevent excessive loss of life and livelihood. But it is often the poorest people who live next to the river and who are exposed to the devastating power of water and mud. Every year, the flooded rivers and landslides take the lives of thousands. But this remodeling of the land is also a creative force. Year after year, layers of river silt build up layers of rich soil. In some places, the soils are more than 300 feet deep. The monsoon has shaped one of the most fertile natural environments in the world, the grasslands of northern India. The grasslands are called tarai, which means swampy. They are lush enough to support some unique heavyweights. The Indian one-horned rhinoceros is just one of the many grazing animals that quickly disappear from view as the grasses grow. In August, the Tarai is as hot and humid as an engine room. 
growth is so fast you can almost see it. Every year the monsoon produces a forest of grass that could easily hide a herd of elephants. Tree seedlings rarely get a hold. Only grasses are hardy enough to survive the annual flooding. The Terai is studded with lakes. This one was left when a long bend in the Brahmaputra River was cut off from the main flow. A herd of wild water buffalo is trying to escape the swarms of flies. And in a backwater, Indian otters are going fishing. Otters don't always cooperate with each other, but here a number of them have hunted down a catfish. The fish is probably heavier than any single otter, so it's a group effort to get it to the shore. The one-horned rhino is a loner. It's suspicious of other males in its patch. is established by bulk. These animals rarely come to blows. The otters use an old riverbank to work off their lunch. They're rolling in mud that was once Himalayan rock. It's September and the summer heat is over. The Indian subcontinent cools and the monsoon season winds down. If the rains have been good, the whole country can relax. The monsoon rains nourish life, but can also bring loss and devastation. This paradox is mirrored in the worship of the sacred river Ganges, where flames honor the souls of the living and the dead. Pilgrims gather at Varanasi and other holy places along its course. Some come to give thanks. Some choose to pass their final days here. The monsoon is a most extraordinary experience for the Indian people. Its awesome power influences every part of Indian life.
The monsoon is deeply rooted in India's economy, politics, art, music, culture, and religion. For 860 million people and an even greater number of animals and plants, the rhythms of life are keyed to the coming and going of the monsoon. In the western Himalayas, where the Ganges is born, the monsoon gives its last gasps. The Himalayan mountains block the passage of the winds. The air rises against the steep mountains, squeezing the last remnants of water out of the clouds. When the winds turn at the end of September, it's as if the whole region is breathing a sigh of relief. The monsoon is mysterious, enigmatic. It can bless one region, deny the next, and tease another. It brings life to the land, but also chaos and destruction. Yet every year the country eagerly awaits the summer, because they know that's the season of the shifting winds, the season of rebirth, and promise. Because the life of the country depends on it, the Indian monsoon, however unpredictable, is always welcome. To find out more about nature, visit us on the PBS homepage at the address on your screen. Nature is made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. And by Canon, providing the power of imaging to express your visions at home and work. And by the Ford Explorer. as National Geographic goes on assignment next at 9 here on Channel 36.